Okay, so in the last video, we saw how when we when, when a ball completes a particular action, it, we get a little report in this uh, ever increasing and ever scrolling window here. Uh, so if the ball goes out, if the ball goes through a hoop, we get a report saying that that's what's happened. Um, what we're going to do now is make it so that there's an action on that line item that can deal with that information. So if I stroke this, this ball through the hoop and it's gone through, it's entered G2 and exited G2, I'm going to press score for red one and there it goes. We've got a score on there. If I play this ball out, then it will say red one cross line two. And when I click this button, the, the red ball will be replaced back onto the boundary or 10 centimeters away from the boundary. And it will go gray to show that it's an out ball. If I play, if I make number 10, say, a, a, um, the striker ball, and I play that stroke, and it hits the number two, and in fact, it hit the pole. So, so that number 10 hit the pole, I've got a button has appeared to say, do you want to score the pole? Um, but I've also got W10 hits W2, so I can touch W2, and now, and now uh, ball two is subject to a spark. So, so now this list item here now forms ability to do actions, and that's enabled us to get rid of the, the little spark menu that we had, because now when we touch balls, uh, we'll be able to spark them by selecting it from this list. So how did we do this? Well, clearly the prefab for the activity login uh, is going to be a bit different. Instead of just being a text mesh pro item we've also got these buttons in waiting so we've got a button for doing the scoring a button for doing the for saying a touch has been made and do you want a spark and a button for saying that the ball has gone out um, do you want to put it uh, place it as an out ball uh, 10 centimeters away from the boundary so that means that our activity log script has got to change as well. And so now, in addition to us making the, the, the item by instantiating it and setting it as a child of the, the content holder and putting in the description, now we're going to say, what type of action is it? So if it's a touch action, show that touch button and change the text on the button and then communicate which ball the action is going to apply to. If it's a scoring action, because it's either hitting the pole or going through a, a gate, then show the score button, give some information on the button about what action is going to be taken and remember which ball it is that needs to have the score adjusted. And if it's an out ball, if it's gone out, then uh, show the button that's relevant to that, say which ball it is, and uh, remember which ball to do the action on. And then the, the, that means then that the, the information that needs to be passed to the, uh, to the activity log script is is going to have three components um, it's going to we're going to have the description we're going to be able, have to specify which button should be activated and which ball needs to be uh, acted on so the scripts that we had in place that were triggering this activity log item say for example the the gate detector now they need to pass not just the description but they need to pass which particular button needs to be activated in this case score if it's exited um, nothing if it's uh, only just entered and then which ball number has has been uh, uh, is is the ball that has been affected 
Uh, the similar sort, similar sort of thing would happen with the line detector. So with the line detector, uh, which ball has crossed which line, what button should be activated, and uh, you know what what ball needs to be moved back in. Now with the the line detector script, we are of course able as the ball crosses the line to make a judgment about where the ball has gone off because we can create this vector three which is when this trigger happens what is the position of the thing that's triggered in other words what's the position of the ball and then we can say well depending on which line it is depending on what the name of the transform of the item that's been triggered is at decide on where the ball would have to be replaced so it's always going to be 10 centimeters in from the line and so depending on which line it was it's either the x or the z coordinate and it's either positive or negative depending on which four of the four lines it is and having decided where the ball needs to be put back in we can store that information in the ball itself so this part of the script for the line detector now enables us to not only detect that the and record that the, the ball has gone over the line, but we now know where to put it back in. And that means on the ball, we have a couple of extra fields. We have a field uh, to record where the ball should be put back in, uh, where, where did it last go off at, and also we want to monitor is it an out ball so so now it's important for us to know whether a ball is a ball in play or a ball that's an out ball so if we want to set the ball to back onto the boundary in the right position we we need to use that last off at uh, vector three to put it back in the right place and of course, that's done by simply min, uh, manipulating its position on the minimap according to the icon coords function that we uh, that we discussed when we were talking about how the minimap relates the 3D view to the to the 2D view. So that's how we would deal with the the ball going out, and that particular function would be called from the button that is on the activity log item. And that leads us to talk about how the activity log item has a script of its own. So basically this script is, is one that contains the three functionalities for setting up a spark or calling the, the function in the stroke manager script that sets up a spark. Um, calling that a ball should be an out ball and resetting it to the right position inside the boundary and scoring the points. So calling the, the script on the scoreboard that will set the points tally a bit higher for the ball uh, of concern. So the activity log item has this script attached to it, which makes reference to the, the three different types of button. And that means that when you press that button, so if, we, if this was the active button, if you press this button, you would be triggering the little function within the activity log item that then goes off to the scoreboard and increases the score for the particular ball. So the scripts that have had to change are the, uh, the ball script, which has had to have uh, a reference when it, when it reports uh, a, a, a hit, it needs to trigger the, the touch button and it needs to know which ball uh, is going to be the ball that, that should be touched. And all of the all of the scripts that that recorded information in the scrollable list now need to pass all three bits of, of those information the, the, the message the button 
the ball. So <clears throat> the same would be true of the pole detector. So the message, the button, the, the ball. Um, and the mini map, that, that has to uh, change now to monitor whether or not the ball is an out ball. Because if the ball is an out ball, it needs to be gray. If it's not an out ball, it needs to be either red or white. So we've got this additional line in the update script, the update function, um, which is if the, the ball is an out ball, then make it gray. Otherwise, make it either red or white, depending on what its number is in the, um, in the order of things. So, and that's happening in the update function. So that give, will give us the opportunity to, to tag a ball as an out ball um, in a continual or in a continuous manner. We, uh, it's not just on um, something that would happen uh, and then have to be switched back. Uh, at, it, it's, it's happening as a continual update. Um, so I think that's that's mainly mainly it. Uh, we've got a nice functionality now where we can we can control decisions from this report that we're getting. Uh, I might just have a quick look at just to confirm how things have have changed. And this little function in the plastic SCM is rather nice. And what this tells me is that in the ball script, I have actually taken the plunge of adding the the field uh, ball number to the ball characteristics because um, it is it turns out that it is important to know what number it is in the list uh, when you're calling other other functions in in other scripts uh, because we are um, are now calling the minimap script in here. When we set to the boundary, we're moving the graphic to just outside the boundary. It need, means that we need to have a reference to the minimap script, which we um, establish at the start. And of course, we have these two fields here now that, that tell us where the ball went off and uh, whether or not it is an out ball. With the, the gate detector and the line detector, the only changes there were just adding the extra information to the function that generates the activity log item. In the minimap, the, the extra thing that we put in there, of course, was this continual monitoring of whether or not the ball was an out ball or not. And I think that's just about the only thing that changed in there, and it is. Um, and in the stroke manager, the the major difference here is is just that we are resetting the ball to be an infield ball when we've hit the stroke. So as soon as we we hit as part of the hit the stroke function, we reset his out ball to to the false. And I think that's the only thing that we've we've got happening on that one. So yeah, so that's the, we've got some pretty good playable functionality now. The only thing I think now that we've got to deal with is the timing. That's the only uh, thing that we haven't covered is how, how to just make this clock tick down and do the shot clock. Uh, otherwise, we're, we're pretty much at the stage where we've got something that uh, people can modify and, and maybe sort out a few little bugs here and there because there are certain nuances in, in the way that gate ball is played that I might not have covered um, in, in this uh, simulation. But that will certainly take us to very close to near the end of all the coding.